Crime. Does it pay? I don't know, and quite frankly, I don't want to know, because the thought terrifies me, because if I were in prison, I'd be tossed around amongst the inmates like yesterday's beef. <laughs> mm. But let me tell you about someone who is in prison, and this slice of sirloin answers to no brisket. This little firecracker is Bandida, and she is plotting her daring escape. A lamb on the run. Can you and your buddies prevent her pursuit of freedom? Or will she use all of her sly cunning to escape, just like a dolphin imitating a fox? Let's check it out. Bandida is a cooperative game where you can play by yourself or with up to three more chums. It is a tiny game and packed inside it is a deck of 70 cards and a starting tile. You place the starting tile and Bandida is going to begin her breakout. And quite frankly, if you're going to build a prison with bars so far apart, you're asking for trouble. Quick side note, ever seen the film Eyes Without a Face? Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with the game right here, but Bandida, she certainly has no eyes and she's without a face. But, but she does have a mouth. She's got a mouth, yeah. So she's, she's a mouth without a head, but can also wear a hat. And she has no arms. Which is probably why she's so elusive, because ain't no woman gonna be held down by the shackles of men. Now, each player is dealt a hand of three cards. On your turn, you're going to lay down one of these cards that adds track to Bandida's paths of exit. You draw a card back up and play moves on to the next person. Now, the aim of the game is to try and block all the exits, thus preventing Bandida's escape. Now, you can do this by laying cards that have these dead ends on them. Simply plug up all the holes and your team is victorious. It sounds easy enough, but the problem is that the majority of these dead-end cards have other exits on them, which at times is like taking one step forward and two steps back as you block one path, only to open up two more. And that's the crux of the game. Now, you simply cannot win just by placing out your dead-end cards. You have to be canny for to let your paths branch out and then come back together, creating one continuous loop, like you're some kind of master fiend placing a maze that's impossible for your mice. <laughs> I am your god! <laughs> but don't let the deck run out, because otherwise you've screwed the pooch on that one. No, no I don't want to. It's demeaning. You're my god. This game is a follow-up to Helvetique's Bandido, which is essentially the same game. However, its successor is packed with something slightly different. The predecessor was a straightforward, just lay down your path and that was it. Whereas Bandido here comes with a little extra spice sprinkled on top. Some cards in the deck are loaded with abilities. Some help you like, ooh, I get an extra card whereas others really, really mess you up, like this alarm card that you must play immediately. Oh no, the draw deck has been reduced by five cards. How could you do this to me, cruel world? Darn you to heck, Bandida. Darn you to heck! Whereas other cards, like this map card, when you play it, will make you destroy three cards that you've already laid out on the table, which, depending on how you play it, could be a blessing or a curse. Bandida offers up variants too, three game modes to be precise. The first of these adds this ladder card to the deck, which transforms you from being the femme fatale's captors to her accomplices as you try to block the dead ends and guide her to her path of freedom, which changes the game... barely? Now, if you happen to own a copy of Bandido, well, then it's time to turn down the lights put on a little bit of Barry White, and play the lover's mode. Now, nothing says romance like making things hard. 
The difficulty, that is. <laughs> Take the Bandido card from the base game and shuffle it in with your draw pile. Now, was a handful of exits not hard enough for you? Because we're about to double it. Block all the exits, otherwise your Bonnie and Clyde, Benny and Clyde, or Bonnie and Claire pairings will wander off in tandem, hand in hand, as the sun sets blissfully below the horizon. So what are my thoughts on Bandido? Well, firstly, I think that this game is a fantastic puzzle. I love the learning curve that it offers because pretty much straight out of the box you can start playing. However, it's going to take time for you to understand how the tricky cards work and come up with a method on how to use them efficiently. It's also a great feeling that it gives you when you are able to bring two elaborate paths that have spread out and bring them back together to conjoin once more, making you feel like a real clever clocks. I also believe that over time, the probability of you succeeding at this game will improve. So it's a game that really rewards putting that effort into it. Also, games are fantastic when it comes right down to a tense finale when that deck is getting really short and you've only got one or two more exits to try to block. However, that's not going to be always the case. Sometimes you're going to finish the game quite quickly or you'll get towards the end of the game knowing that you're going to be facing defeat because you're dwindling deck and the fact that you've just got too many exits to plug. Additionally, the Bandida card is dual-sided, so if you're finding five exits that little bit too simple to beat, well then you can flip it over, adding an extra exit to contend with, thus making it more challenging. Now, I haven't had this happen to me, but sometimes the game is just boiled down to the luck of the draw. I've seen accounts online of people being able to complete the game within a matter of turns, simply because they drew the right loop and dead end cards, thus getting victory within a matter of turns. Now this kind of victory seems completely vacuous to me because you haven't extolled many efforts to try and win the game, it's more been down to the luck of the draw instead. Also, those kinds of games don't look as remarkable on the table. It's so much more impressive when you have a broad landscape spread over like a massive sneeze. <laughs> I don't really have any other criticisms of the base game, I think it is really strong. Now the second game mode where you add the ladder card doesn't really change anything at all. In fact it probably makes it a little easier as it provides a valuable extra dead end card. Although you do automatically lose the game if you happen to have to discard that ladder card when you draw one of those alarm cards. If you made it this far into the video, then you're probably wondering how does it compare to its partner Bandido. Now I can't be as objective as I'd like to be because I actually haven't played Bandido. However, what I can say is that I'm really happy with this purchase. I think it is a fantastic filler game because there's enough there to make your head scratch, but I'm also quite happy to play at the end of the night when my brain is pretty dead because I've got a simple mind that's easy to please just by laying down and connecting paths. I quite enjoy it. Now, if you're like me and you own Bandida, is it worth purchasing Bandido? Well, let's consult the gaming gods. Kinetiatus. Lycoconidus Feldium Langus Ericus No Bandida is the same game as Bandido, except it has those upgraded ability cards. Now, believe it or not, you could play the game and choose to ignore those abilities, and therefore you've got the exact same game as Bandido. The only slight difference is that the alarm cards have the alarms printed on the back of the cards. 
Now this slightly spoils it for me because then you have a fair idea of what's going to be coming on the next turn. Now with an alarm I prefer having the shock and surprise of it when it appears. Now if you own Bandido, is it worth purchasing Bandida? Well, let's consult those gods again. No! Now the ability cards can be a tad convoluted and you're only gonna be invested in Bandida if you've really enjoyed Bandido and you want that little step up. But herein lies the problem. That learning curve for seasoned players of Bandido drastically flattens because the game does not offer that much new other than those ability cards and once you've learned them you're already playing the same game. But what about the lovers mode John? What about combining both games to make an epic feast for bandits? Well do we have to consult the gods on this one? No. In actual fact I'm going to throw my matches out of the pram on this one and tell you why. P.S. Don't give matches to babies. To play this mode, you need one card from the base game. That's right, one card. Why couldn't you have simply just printed that card and added it to the box? Is beyond me. And then it comes to things like, oh, we don't want people who own Bandido to feel left out. And, oh, it's a great way to combine both games. It's not. It's a lousy trick to try to entice people into purchasing both games. And the problem is as well that this game mode is really poorly executed and so random. You shuffle the Bandido card somewhere into the deck, so if he ends up near the bottom, the game's pretty much impossible unless you have that foresight to build loads of paths all leading to one area that you can then just place him in there perfectly. It's just pretty poorly executed and quite frankly that mode needs revising or house ruling to make it any good. So for me it just does not warrant purchasing both games and I'm going to reiterate my point. It's one card. Does it really cost that much just to have put it in the box? Come on. Come on. Nevertheless, despite my irritations, I really, really enjoy this game. But for the love of everything that is gravy, please do not waste your money on purchasing both editions. If you're wondering which one to opt for, I would go for Bandida, simply because you then have the choice as to whether or not you would like to play the game with or just ignore the ability cards altogether. Anyway, that's my two pennies on the matter. What are your favourite games that come in a tiny box? And if you do own both editions and you enjoy having them both, then you're welcome to try and change my mind. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed what you've seen. I'm John the Ball Game Chap. Happy gaming and cheerio.